All right, everybody, welcome back to the Whiskey Jedi Podcast. I am the Whiskey Jedi, Jake Berlin, a.k.a. Qui-Gon Jake, as I go on uh, my social media and some other shows that I do uh, elsewhere. Um, welcome back. This is the show where we are talking not just Star Wars, but we are talking whiskey and bourbon and, and all the different types of whiskey that are out there on each and every show. We're, we're debuting and, and highlighting, as I have there on the corner, um, whiskeys that I have, tr- I have not tried, I have tried, um, popular ones, unknown ones, and just discussing them as we discuss Star Wars at the same time. Um, for, the, for my regular followers, I did not have a show last week. Uh, it's been a quite quite of a busy a uh, couple of weeks for me here. Um, I'm in the process of moving currently, and and uh, I just bought a house, and uh, we're doing some some touch ups, and it's taking a little bit of time, and um, obviously that's gonna take up a lot of my time, and so I wasn't able to get to a show last week, but I'm back to talk some really really cool things. And um, last week was crazy for Star Wars. It it really was crazy for Star Wars, and uh, there was a lot of different things going on in a lot of different mediums. Um, that weren't including films. Uh, very interesting. And I'm going to be talking about them today. It's, uh, the title of the episode is This Week in Star Wars. And there's plenty to talk about. Um, more than likely a shorter episode. Uh, kind of just dive into a couple things here. But if you see there on the left-hand side of the screen, um, we're going to be talking Maker's Mark today. One of the most popular whiskey, one of the most popular bourbons available on the market. Um, has been around for a very, very long time. And uh, funny enough, I have actually never tried it. I have never had it. I'm sure a lot of you are screaming at me through the ether right now about the fact that that is not the case. Um, I have never attempted to try it, thought about having it. Uh, Very, very interesting. I know uh, it's just one that I've missed. You know, I've mentioned multiple times on the show, um, my whiskey tasting has just begun a very short number of years ago. And over that time span, I just have never gotten Maker's Mark. So... Um, I'm going to go ahead and pour a glass while we're talking here. Um, we're going to d- dive into a little bit of of the company behind it and uh, the bottle and, and the, the background of it all. Uh, a little bit here in just a bit. But uh, we're going to talk about some Star Wars. And to talk about, to, to, they, to talk first, excuse me, um, is going to be the brand new book that was announced uh, for, for Star Wars. And I'm a huge book reader for Star Wars. Uh, I love a lot of the canon novels that have been coming out the last number of years. Um, there have been some really, really good ones. Lords of the Sith is one I talked about on the very first show that I did for this podcast. Um, you know, Bloodline is another great one. Lost Stars. Uh, there's so many great novels out there that are are not just for Star Wars fans, but book fans in general. They're really, really good. Um, but one of my favorites that have cut that has come out so far is a book called From a Certain Point of View. Now. If you've never heard of the book, uh, the premise behind the, the book is that it's 40 short stories from 40 from 40 short stories from 40 different authors celebrating the 40th anniversary of A New Hope, the very first Star Wars film. So the idea behind these stories is it's focusing on background characters. It's focusing on moments that we don't see that are in between the cut scenes. Um, like there's characters in the background in the cantina, but there's also a story about Obi-Wan and Yoda in there. Um, and so it's very, very cool. And now that this year, and I talked about it recently on one of the past episodes, it is officially the 40th anniversary of The Empire Strikes Back. They are doing the sequel from a certain point of view, The Empire Strikes Back, or if you want to call it, From a Certain Point of View Strikes Back. Um, they are officially doing a book on the greatest Star Wars film of all time. And I am... Very, very excited about this. Um, And I'm going to go ahead and read the press release here real quick. Uh, That way we can get a little bit of background for you guys who may not know exactly what this is or have never heard of it. Um, And so it goes as follows. 40 years of Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. 40 authors retelling its stories. Sounds good to us. The anthology series from a certain point of view is set to return from a certain point of view. The Empire Strikes Back. Celebrating 40 years of Episode 5 and arriving November 10th. So great that it's coming this um, like its predecessor, from a certain point of view, The Empire Strikes Back will feature 40 stories from 40 authors reimagining the classic sequel through the eyes of background characters, heroes, villains, droids, and creatures. Um, it's very cool. Uh, there was even a story in the first one that was centered on a, on a creature that couldn't talk. A um, couple droids in there. A very, very cool idea. I know a lot of people don't like it because it's kind of a, a little wacky of an idea, but it's something I really enjoy just because... 
gives you a different perspective on on the film and um like i had mentioned uh and this is something that clone wars did very well too it it gave us an idea of what the cutscenes were like in revenge of the sith right um we saw that moment of that meeting between yoda uh mace windu aya aya secure ayala secure excuse me um and kiati mundi but then all of a sudden in the clone wars we we realized that ahsoka walks in shortly afterwards um and the book kind of has the same idea behind it it's exactly what it does here and so I'm very much looking forward to it. And as I've mentioned multiple times, The Empire Strikes Back is not just my favorite Star Wars movie. It's my favorite movie, period. The more about this film, the better. Uh, I cannot wait. And the fact that it's coming in November is really, really exciting. I know it's, it seems like it's far away, but with 2020 being such a uh, such a downer, um, I'm hoping that that date kind of, uh, kind of arrives a little soon. All right. Let's talk Maker's Mark here. I just took my first sip ever of Maker's Mark. And I gotta say, um, I open this bottle, and, and I'll start with this. We obviously know that Maker's Mark, their signature is the wax, right? They have the wax here, and you're gonna be looking at me like, okay, what is he doing with this wax? Why is it in pieces? And I'll tell you why. I didn't open this bottle. Yeah, I didn't open this bottle. This bottle was opened um, by a friend. And I was not in the room, and unfortunately, uh, the bottle, the wax just got absolutely tore up. And it's really unfortunate, because you may be seeing that it's blue and yellow. Um, it's not the classic red, uh, red wax that is typically on the Maker's Mark bottle. And the reason why is because I have this bad boy. Um, I was given the Golden State Warrior Edition um, of the Maker, Maker's Mark whiskey by my sister and her boyfriend. I'm very excited about it incredibly beautiful bottle i love the way it's shaped first of all with the square um shaping of the bottle and then the blue and yellow wax on top of it is really really cool um but unfortunately that wax is now gone so i just have a cap here um and i'll definitely be looking into getting a, a one of those in the future just to kind of replace it but uh that's neither here nor there that, that that's the smallest of the issues in the world right now as far as losing the wax on the maker's mark bottle um but the whiskey itself, I cracked the bottle open, and it's the first time I'd ever smelt it or anything, and it has a very, very sweet smell, and I was not expecting that, right? Bourbon usually has a very distinct flavor to it, um, and now I understand why Maker's Mark is considered one of the most popular bourbons out there. Uh, it smells, before you even taste it, it smells incredible, and with whiskey, that's what you want. You want something that hits you right away, and you know exactly what you're diving into. Um, and Maker's Mark absolutely... Uh, succeeds at that so uh, there's a check mark there for the, for for this company um, as far as the tasting goes it really does go down smooth um, I had done on my last episode I talked about Blaine's bourbon my all-time favorite and I don't think anything will ever come close to it um, but as of now the one that I can probably say outside of of and I, I kind of categorize whiskey in a different way um, you know I, I kind of categorize the flavoring together right I have I have the PB&J whiskey back there. I have the orange whiskey back there, which I have done on this show. Um, I put those in their own little section. And then I put bourbons, you know, straight Kentucky bourbons and just bourbons in general together. I put rye together as, as you typically would. And so if I'm talking just strictly bourbon here, um, I'm not going to say it's a close second, but if anything came close to a, to a blends, it definitely is at this moment in time, the maker's mark. It really does taste really good. And um and I, I'm glad that I'm trying it here for the first time with you guys. Uh, I can understand why everyone absolutely loves this whiskey. And it's something that I will definitely always have on the shelf at home um, to uh, pour, a glass, uh, pour a glass of uh, here or there. I'll get into some uh, details about the company and, and the tasting here in just a little bit. But um, that's all I want to really mention on from a certain point of view. There's not a whole lot to talk about because it's just the announcement of the book. Um, but I, I felt like it was needed to discuss just because it's a, it's a book that is very underrated. It's a book that's very underread. A lot of people don't know about it. If you're not a Star Wars fan, um, it's a very interesting way to read and listen to Star Wars because I do audiobooks. Um, I'm an audiobook, uh, person. That's what I like doing. I will always, 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 always tell people that audiobooks are the way to go. I know some people have to read, which I totally get, but for myself, I just love the interaction and the experience that audiobook gives me. Um, and, and the same thing goes with from, from a certain point of view. So 
Uh, I highly recommend checking it out. It's, they're not long. Again, they're 40 short stories. The book is not very long, but it's very cool because it gives you um, some very interesting perspectives from, di from different characters you've never heard of, as well as characters that we have had in the past in Star Wars. Okay, the next thing I have here, I got two of three. I, I've, I've got one down. Let's get to the middle one here. And this is a big one because um, it was going to be my first ever experience in that at this. And this is uh, Star Wars Celebration. Um, Star Wars Celebration has officially been canceled. Now, this is something that I have been expecting, obviously. It's nothing that I'm surprised about uh, with COVID-19 going on. 2020 essentially just itself being canceled. Or feeling like it should be canceled anyway. Uh, this is nothing at, at all surprising. I was expecting to hear this at some point, uh, whether it was months ago now or a few weeks down the road. The celebration was happening in August, so it needed to happen at an early enough point. Um, but they came out and said last week, yes, the celebration is officially canceled. It is postponed. And unfortunately for us Californians or people who had tickets to this celebration, it is postponed until 2022 two years away and that's a very that's a big bummer um i'm not going to say that at this moment in time i'm not going to attend the chicago one because i would love to next year um but there was something really special about the first celebration being in anaheim um to be determined if i'm if i end up going next year and taking a trip out to chicago i've always wanted to go to chicago and celebration might be the perfect reason why to go to chicago but uh it is it is a bummer it's a bummer and and um, I, I was really looking forward to it because myself, uh, my girlfriend Gabby was going to be going with us, and then my two podcast buddies, Jacob and Brian, were going to be joining me as well, and as well as meeting up with a couple others that I know from Southern California and other Star Wars shows to kind of hang out and, and see each other and even meet for the first time. Um, it was going to be a really, really cool, you know, for lack of a better term, celebration of not just Star Wars, but the community that we're involved in with podcasting and and, and telling these things over the internet as far as shows or, or audio wise or, or even websites. Um, it's a big bummer. It's a big cancellation. And so I'm, I'm definitely bummed about it, but it makes sense. You know, I, I don't, even if like, like, let's say hypothetically that they would have kept celebration on and, and everything in the world right now would have been the same or similar to in August, as far as COVID and uh, quarantine and just stuff like that. I don't know if I would have made the trip. I don't know if I would have made the trip. It's it's a mass group of people in a very confined space. And that obviously has been shown over the last few weeks specifically. That does not go well. And it probably would have been really stupid of me to be like, yeah, but it's my first celebration. It's Star Wars. I don't know when I'm going to be able to do this again. I have to counter that with living and surviving, you know, and and taking care of myself and, and taking care of my girlfriend and making sure my friends aren't doing stupid things. And, um, and so although it would have been very difficult to say no, I would have had to because I maybe have maybe would have never gotten the chance to go to another celebration ever again. You know, and I would not have been able to see this guy behind me ever again. Who knows as he turns over there and gets comfortable um, and flips over as he usually does. <laughs> um, for your audio listeners, if you're listening, uh, my dog is in the background. He's currently on his back, um, passed out. Uh, but yeah, so it, it definitely is a big bummer here that celebration is canceled. But um, again, I, I just think back to the fact that I have to be able to live and survive, right? I don't want to uh, be a, a, a victim of COVID as so many have been over the last couple months. It's terrible. And um, I have to make sure I'm supporting the right decisions as far as staying quarantined and being safe and and making sure others around me are safe as well. And so uh, it's a big bummer. Um, it's also a big bummer that they couldn't have just shifted back uh, uh, both events and put Anaheim in 2021 and Chicago in 2022. But I understand why. I understand why they didn't do that. And uh, as a Californian, again, it is a bummer. It's unfortunate. But never say never to go into Chicago next year. As I've mentioned and told multiple people around me, um, Chicago is one of the places that I want to visit the most. And if they continue to put celebration in August, it's even more enticing because I'm a massive baseball fan. And I've talked about this on this podcast. Um, and being able to go to a game at Wrigley Field in August would be an absolute dream. Um, and so we'll see. We'll see. But for now, Star Wars Celebration in 2020 is canceled. And that also comes at the cost of Star Wars Night at Disneyland. 
Uh, for those of you who don't know, they do these Star Wars, they do these, excuse me, they do what's called the Disneyland uh, After Dark series. Um, and each year, a couple times a year, they do what's called um, the After Dark series nights. And they basically give people the chance to uh, attend a theme event from 9 to 1 a.m. Um, and I went to the very first one, which was two years ago, or three years ago by now. Uh, and it was Star Wars. It was the very first one. It was Star Wars. It was incredible. Uh, only a select number of people got tickets to this. And what they do is they kick everybody else out of the park. And there's characters that don't usually show up at Disneyland. Um, you get to take pictures with them. They, they put these props up to take pictures at. There's exclusive merchandise. Um, obviously, with people being kicked out of the park, the lines are incredibly short. And now with the addition of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, it was going to be even a bigger and better experience. And um, it is unfortunate that it's a canceled, but being with what COVID is, it makes sense, just like I said with Celebration. And I'm hoping they pair it again in 2022 with Celebration as they were with this because they were happening on the same weekend. Um, but if they do do one next year, I will 1,000% go if everything is clear and good to go as far as COVID uh, uh, on the world, essentially. So. All right, guys, let's talk a little bit more about Maker's Mark here. Uh, before we get to the taste of this bottle, I'm still kind of a, a little bit frustrated about the wax part of this. A few uh, logistics side of this. Um, if you notice on this bottle, whiskey is spelled wrong. Now, that is not a mistake. Um, that is not a typo on this specific bottle. Many, many of you may know this, um, but it is actually a callback to uh to the ancestors the scottish ancestors of the um the seat not the seat um the founders of maker's mark now let me go ahead and type in this might make sure their name mark if i have their correct name down it's the samuels the samuels um purposely put this name on here to uh is it's from the scottish an Irish or uh, ancestors. That's they're calling back to the people of their past, um, and this is how they spell it. They, they spell it without the e in there. It's actually a really really cool trademark. Um, I, I really actually pretty pretty enjoy that. And so uh, it's a cool little twist there. As we mentioned last week, or not last week, but two weeks ago with Blanton's, how they do the letters on top of the topper, and you can collect the word Blanton's um, over time. Um, this is their trademark. No e, and obviously. There's no collector, obviously, uh, for letters or whatnot, but the collector is the wax, and that's the next part of this conversation here. Um, the wax is actually uh, has been a staple from the very first bottle that was ever distilled, um, and it's a connection uh, from the, uh, the founders again. Um, just a little topper, um, and Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Um, oh my God, why am I forgetting? Mrs. Samuel. There we go. Mrs. Samuel uh, was in, in charge of creating the look of the bottle, and it was her idea to do the wax. And uh, what's cool about Maker's Mark here is that there's no chain um, that, that dips these bottles in wax. It's actually hand done on every single bottle. Every single bottle is hand dipped um, b b before being sent off to customers and grocery stores around the world. Um, it's funny, some, some people who high up in the company over the years have, all, have even said that they can tell by who dips them or where it's dipped just by looking at the bottle. Um, and so it's a very, very incredibly cool trademark, the fact that it's hand dipped. The only side effect from it being hand dipped is that it cuts the production line about 50% from its competitors. So um, the production line for the other bottles obviously being machine and doing it on a faster pace. For Maker's Mark, them being it hand dipped, you have to slow the the chain down a little bit, and um, but obviously that doesn't affect their 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 value or or their money line, being that it's one of the most popular out there, popular bottles out there. Um, just some cool facts there. Uh, and as far as where it's from, it's Kentucky straight bourbon, handmade. Um, it's distilled, aged, and bottled by the Maker's Mark Distillery, uh, Star Hill Farm, Loretto, Kentucky, um, USA. So a uh, very, very original, um, classic bottle of bourbon that uh, I really, really enjoy. So I definitely highly, highly recommend checking this out. 
Um, and as far as the taste goes, uh, it's actually, like I mentioned earlier, it's, it has a little bit of a sweeter flavor to it. Um, it's so well balanced. Such a well balanced whiskey. And I have some notes up here. Just a second. Here we go. Um, so the, the words I wrote down, uh, I wrote down the word mellow. Uh, it's a very mellow type of bourbon. It's not, you know, kind of like hits you like a truck would, right? Um, you know exactly what you're getting into. It definitely has a honey blend to it. You can taste it right away. Uh, a little bit of orange as well, which most bourbon does um, have that orange, which is why the old fashioned is such a perfect drink for it. Uh, but as I mentioned, when I smelled it, it's, it's a sweeter flavor, um, but it's so well balanced, like I keep mentioning. Um, just really does hit that palate. Um, it's not the most unique bourbon out there, but uh, it's something that you can go to time and time again and be satisfied with and be happy with that you drink a glass after work or you come home after a hard day uh, or, or out on the town. You know, if you grab an old fashioned or straight or uh, just on the rocks or whatever it may be, um, it's always going to satisfy your palate. So, and being the first time that I've had this, I cannot recommend it enough. Maker's Mark, guys, and I'm sure you guys have all had it uh, or have at least heard of it. Um, and so I, I'm late to the to the ball game, obviously, but uh, I'm very very happy that um, it's up to the hype. So, all right, let's go ahead and get to our last topic here in Star Wars, and we're going to be running uh, about another ten minutes or so, guys. Very very short episode today, um, but that is a new video game for Star Wars. Something that I'm absolutely pumped about, and that is Star Wars Squadrons. Um, Star Wars Squadrons was actually leaked uh, before it was officially announced by EA. And then last week, um, during the EA Play Live, the, uh, the live event um, where they announced all their games for the future, uh, we got to see actual gameplay for the game. Now, there was a trailer a couple days before that that gave us a little bit of an insight, right? It was kind of... Uh, it was created specifically to to be a movie trailer, right? Uh, following a character. But the EA Play event gave us a real in-depth look at what this game is. It's set after Return of the Jedi um, as Imperial forces and the New Republic are battling it out because obviously the fight never ends. Um, and the cool thing with this game is, is that it's not just going to have the multiplayer effect that Battlefront does. Um, it's going to have a gameplay, a story mode, just like Battlefront 2 does as well. Um, it's cross compatible, which is, is obviously a huge, huge thing these days. Um, almost every game is now doing this because it just makes sense. It took long enough. You know, I have an Xbox, Xbox feels best in my hands, but some of my best friends have PlayStations and, um, I, I have a PlayStation back there as well, but I don't play it as much as I do the Xbox. And so now being able to play this game, as well as a lot of others um, around whatever platform you have, whether it's Xbox, PlayStation, PC, um, it's, it's a huge get. It's a huge get. Um, but the coolest thing about this, uh, this game is that during your adventure through the gameplay, through these modes, you get to play as both the New Republic and Imperials. Um, your story is essentially going to be flip-flopping as you go along. And that's very, very cool. That's, that's a very cool way to play this game. You're seeing different viewpoints, right? A lot of games, a lot of Star Wars games in a way, uh, that have just like a strictly, um, a strict gameplay. You're playing as either the good guys or the bad guys. Um, an example is, is Battlefront. Most of the time you're playing as the good guys. Um, you do have those times where you're playing as, or excuse me, not Battlefront 2. Um, I'm thinking about the old school Battlefront. Um, Battlefront 2, you're playing as Aiden Versio, uh, who is um, who is an Imperial turned good, right? So it's kind of a flip-flop there, but you're not kind of going back and forth. But uh, having this game be able to play as both New Republic pilots, Imperial pilots, it's very, very cool. Now, I'm extremely interested to see the, the types of missions and stories they tell because it's all within a cockpit. It's You're not touching the ground. Um, it's called Star Wars Squadrons for a reason, and so... Uh, how they tell that story is going to be very, very interesting. And I'm very excited to learn what that is. Um, some some people are a little frustrated with what the modes are, the fact that it's just 5v5. Um, I will withhold any comments or concerns until I actually play the game. Um, and, I, and I understand that a lot of people may be wondering 
uh, how much of the game there actually is because it is only $40. It's not the normal $60 or $70. Um, that doesn't bother me. It, it really doesn't bother me. I think that um, I think that we're going to be getting a, a plethora of Star Wars games here in the near, near future. And it being $40, bucks, it's, just, it's just a luck. We're just lucky to have it. And, and the fact that it's based on all starships is what I like the most. I'm starship guy you guys may, may have heard me talk about it before um i'm a car guy in real life when it comes to movies and star wars specifically i love the aerial aspect it's it's what i it's what i'm sucked into whether it's something like top gun star wars star trek um all kinds of sci-fi stuff or just fighter pilot stuff i'm sucked into the aerial aspect of these stories and and playing a game that's fully dedicated to this is very exciting on my part of it. So uh, I cannot wait to see what this game really looks like. The gameplay story, the gameplay trailer, excuse me, which is like six minutes long, was incredible. Um, the trailer is also really, really cool as well. Some really incredible visuals. Um, and it, it comes out very soon. It comes out like October 2nd or something like that. So it's right around the corner. So I cannot say enough how excited I am about this, how much I'm looking forward to this to this game. Um, it's something that I'm I'm going to be playing constantly, and it's also uh, something that I completely decided on doing um, for you for you listeners and, and you regulars on this show. Um, I'm going to be playing on this channel. I'm going to find a way. I'm going to educate myself. I have a good buddy who does streaming. Um, I'm going to stream Star Wars Squadrons on this channel when it comes out. Um, I may I might make it a weekly thing. I have a few months to kind of uh, get to know the platforms and how to do it and, and find a schedule for it. But I will be streaming and playing the game on this channel live and uh, kind of venturing, adventuring my way through this game on a weekly basis uh, with you guys. So I hope you guys join me for that one and I hope for some new fans find us then. Um, but a lot, of a lot of cool stuff. So I'm very excited for that one. I'm excited for all the stuff that happened. Obviously not for the Star Wars Celebration cancellation, but knowing that it is coming back in 2022 in Anaheim is a good sign. Um, and maybe I went my, my, my way to uh, Chicago as well. So uh, as I mentioned, guys, uh, a shorter episode today. Um, there was a lot of stuff that happened last week, but I didn't want to dive too much into it because I might dive into a little bit deeper on some specific, specific topics next week. And as I mentioned up top, uh, it's been a crazy couple weeks for me as far as um, real life things. And uh, I'm very excited for the new, the new uh, chapter that I'm, I'm going into. But it's taking up a lot of my time, and you guys can probably see the little bit of bags under my eyes for you viewers. Um, I am a little tired, so um, but I'm taking the time to uh, to talk some Star Wars, talk some whiskey for you guys. And as far as the whiskey goes, um, you know, pun intended, Maker's Mark hit the mark. It hit the mark 100%. It's a great bottle of whiskey, um, and uh, it's the some of the straightest Kentucky bourbon you'll have out there. And I understand why everybody loves it. So with some cool details, obviously, right? Some very very cool details with the wax. Um, with the spelling of whiskey, uh, where it comes from. So uh, I, if you have never had it, if you've never heard of it, first of all, go buy yourself a bottle. Highly, highly recommend it. And the biggest thing I can say is that give yourself a tutorial on YouTube, save the wax. And I'm very unfortunate that I wasn't able to open the bottle um, because I would not have this in my hands if, uh, if I was able to open this bottle. So... Um, hopefully, I'll be able to get myself on one of these Warriors exclusives uh, another time. But for now, um, this is what I got to live with, which is okay. And I'm, I'm sure this isn't going to be the last time I'm going to add a Maker's Mark uh, bottle anyway. So uh, for now, guys, this is the Whiskey Jedi Podcast. I can't thank you guys enough for joining me. Um, as you guys can see on the screen, the show is available on audio. I've, li I've mentioned a couple times, listeners, um, if, you, if you listen on Apple, listen on Spotify, or anywhere else as far as podcast platforms, I am available there. The show is available there. So go ahead and just type in the Whiskey Jedi Podcast. You'll be able to find it. And I'd really, really appreciate it if you guys left a uh, a rating on there. Um, some audio platform algorithms, uh, a lot of it relies on ratings and uh, and stars in the comments. And so if you guys are, are willing to do that for me, I'd really, really appreciate it. If you're a watcher, it's on YouTube every single Wednesday. Uh, this show lives on on YouTube. I love doing the video side of it, and you guys get to see my dog roll around in the backyard, or background, excuse me, um, as I shoot the show. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, as always, thank you guys for joining me so much, guys. I really, really appreciate it. As far as where you guys can find me personally, Twitter is the best way to 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 follow me. Um, I'm I'm tweeting about all kinds of stuff and, and 
you know, having fun on there every single day uh, with movies and Star Wars and, and all kinds of different stuff. So at Qui-Gon Jake, you guys can see it right below me there, at Qui-Gon Jake. Uh, Instagram as well, at Qui-Gon Jake, it's, it's the same across the board. Um, I was lucky enough to get that, and the only reason why is because I put the two ends in there. Um, that's why I got that. So uh, for now, this is this week's episode of the Whiskey Jedi Podcast, covering Maker's Mark, covering uh, this week in Star Wars. I am Jake Berlin, so thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you guys next week. Sports people.